Hi, my name is Tina, and welcome to the very first episode of Knitting Blooms. Today is Sunday, May 1st, and like I said, this is my very first episode, so I'm hoping everything goes smoothly. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try not to, to worry about the flub-ups so much. I, As I've been pointed out to late, recently, I'm kind of an overachiever, so I like everything I do to be perfect, but I'm going to try and just go through it and learn as I go and hopefully this will be interesting enough to enough people for me to keep doing it and we'll see how it goes. So I'll start with a quick introduction about myself. I have been knitting, I've known how to knit for since I was a teen, teenager and uh, but I really have only been actively knitting for since 2006 and in 2006 I did all of about one project and then in 2007 I went crazy and I think I did 40 projects so I really didn't do much before that I don't even think I actually finished any knitting projects before 2006 not, not technically finished any projects um, I do also crochet from time to time not very often but from time to time I do uh, do a crochet project and I just recently took up spinning. Um, Kagi from the High Fiber Diet, which I'll talk about in a little bit, she was going to teach a drop spindle class at the Knit Away this year. And being the overachiever that I am, I decided I couldn't wait to wait to knit away. So I went and took a drop spindle class at the uh, local yarn store on March 18th. And Actually, it was the 19th, but the 18th I went in to take to buy some fiber, and then I found out they were having a beginner spinning class the next day. So I did take a class. So I learned quite a bit that weekend, and then the very following weekend I went to the spinning loft in Howell, Michigan. And Beth over there, she in about 30 seconds she taught me a little trick to help me draft my fiber better because my ultimate goal was to spin lace to fingering weight. I like lightweight um, sweaters and I just was not really interested in doing bulky weight or thick and thin or what have you. I know it's very popular and a lot of people like it. For me personally I don't so I was determined that I wasn't going to um, spin because I didn't think I could get the fiber that I wanted. But like I said, Beth um, taught, taught me a little trick, and after that I was just totally hooked. Two weeks later, when I went to the Knit Away, I was determined that, oh, I did not need a spinning wheel. I was just going to use the drop spindle. I was perfectly happy with it. I enjoyed doing it. It took a little longer than a spinning wheel, but I just wasn't didn't think I was going to want to have a spinning wheel. But then at Knit Away, I sat down to a wheel and I had a very good teacher, which was Kagi from the High Fiber Diet again. And I was totally hooked after just one little session of spinning. So needless to say, the next week I bought a wheel at camp and I've been spinning like crazy ever since. So... I will be talking about my knitting on this podcast as well as spinning if I do some crochet. Uh, I'll share a little bit about uh, my life and also anything that I found, you know, during the week, uh, you know, that I found interesting or I found helpful. For instance, um, this week I know that probably I am not I don't typically knit the projects that the mainstream is knitting currently I don't know why but I guess I'm kind of behind the times um, it's not that I don't like the projects that are currently being knitting it's like I guess it's the fact that I kind of have an idea of what I want to knit and when projects become very popular and everybody's casting on for them I've already got in, said in my mind that I'm going to be working on this project next and this project next. So when a project, for instance, like the Japanese Garden Shawl or the Haruni Shawl come up, they go into my queue or go into my favorites to knit at some point, but I don't immediately cast on for them. So 
this podcast might not be interesting to some people who like to do the mainstream, but it might be good for people who aren't doing the mainstream and then when the second wave comes around or what have you maybe I can start a second wave of the Haruni in six months or a year or whatever so we'll see how that goes I like I said I'm don't typically knit what's what everybody else is knitting so maybe it'll be interesting because I'll have different projects that are not familiar to other people um, I do hope to record on a weekly basis sometime over the weekend. I, I'm not going to really promise a specific day because I sometimes I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Uh, today is Sunday, but maybe sometimes I might record on Friday or Saturday. just depends on what's going on for the weekend. I do want to do some book reviews and what have you. I have a ton of books that I can go through. Typically when I get a knitting book, I look at the pictures and then stash it away for when I want to do a project. I don't typically read them. I have started reading uh, the um, Respect the Spindle book because I was learning the drop spindle, so I wanted to, to read something to get some more information. So I might have a review on that in the next co coming weeks or so because I am actually reading that book and maybe it'll encourage me to read some of the other books that I have as well. So let's, I'll get right into um, what's currently on my needles. Um, some of these things have been on my needles for way too long and I do hope that this podcast encourages me to try and move forward and to get some of these old projects done. I started this Icarus shawl back in uh, August of 2009. Yes, I did say 2009. I, I think I am on like row 17 of chart 4. So I'm kind of in the home stretch. And again, like I said, I think Icarus was popular back in 2007 or 2008 when I first started uh, knitting. So, and I didn't cast on until 2009, and here we are in 2011, and I am still working on my shawl. But I am making progress. I'm not sure how this is going to work on the video, but we're going to see how that goes. I am making progress, and like I said, I am in chart four, and I am really enjoying this project. This is knit on with uh, Knit Picks. Mm, shoot, I forgot to look it up, but it is um, a Knit Picks yarn. I think it's Gossamer. I'm not 100% sure. And I am liking it. I'm not liking the, the color repeats as much as I thought I might. I haven't been very good at picking colorways for certain projects, but... Um, I, I still like the colors. I don't like the where the blocks are color are happening like here where you've got a big block of dark blue, but we'll we'll see how it goes and I'm sure I'll wear it once I get it finished. But I am liking it. It's very easy. It looked very intimidating when I first started this project, but after getting started and getting used to the repeats, I don't I don't I can look at the chart and say okay this is my repeat and then you just go across the row and I have the center the center of it marked with a with a a stitch marker because there was a couple times that I would get to the center and I would forget that that was the center and I would try and continue the pattern so I did put a stitch marker in the center so that I knew that that was where I was going to restart the pattern on the other side but so far if I can work on it I have only got a, you know, I think, I think there's like 10 more rows on the chart four, and then I think there's a, an edging, so that's one of my main goals to get that done in the next, next couple months, I hope, you know, I've got so many other things on the needles that I do want to finish too, and start and whatnot, so just like everybody else, you, you want to get other things started, but this is going to be a top priority. The next thing is kind of a modified uh, Lady Eleanor. Again, the Lady Eleanor was popular way back when, but of course I started this um, last in April of 2010. So this is another one that I want to work on and get completed. It's 
once I got started and I learned how to do the backwards knit stitch, it was so much better. So, and I, I cast on, I just decided how many I was going to cast on because this is a different, different way to yarn. This is a heavy, heavy fingering. And, um, I, and I know that the original pattern was written for worsted, so I kind of just decided how, how many stitches I wanted to cast on, and then I just started the pattern like it was written. So, in fact, I think I used a combination of the Lady Eleanor Shawl and another interlock uh, pattern, which was a scarf, and I kind of figured it out. And then I'm going to do some kind of edging on the edge. I'm not really sure what just yet. I think I'll wait until get the whole thing done and then decide what I'm going to do for the edging. I think I have four balls of this and I th think that this is, I really should look up the, the information on these before I get started because I haven't worked on these projects in a while. I think that this is, I want to say that this is Hill Country Instant Gratification, but not really sure. I'll look up, I'll look up that information and um, be sure to mention it next time. And I'll also link my project page in the show notes so that if you're really interested in finding out the colorway. Oh, and that's another thing. All these different yarn names and colorway names and pattern names. I am horrible at pronunciation, so I probably won't be pronouncing a whole lot of pattern names and whatnot unless I've heard somebody pronounce things before. Um, but I will try and include, I will definitely include it in the show notes, and I will try and put um, a border at the bottom with the, the name of the pattern and the, the yarn and whatnot, so then you, you have that information if you want to jot it down. The next thing that I have on my needles are um, a, a modified Emma's Lace pattern from the uh, book A Cuff Above. I typically do not knit patterns from books, from sock patterns from books, I should say. I kind of have developed my own personal vanilla sock formula that I like to use. So when I knit a sock, I will usually use that formula and toss in a stitch pattern that I like or um, just knit regular stockinette. I do like the regular stockinette and with all the self-striping yarns that I have I do a lot of stockinette socks. I don't find them boring at all so I can I can knit them up pretty quickly. This yarn is actually Yarn Chef um, Minestrone and I really like the yarn and I just wanted, because it was uh, almost a semi-solid, you see that there is, there are some variations in the, in the yarn. But because it was almost a semi-solid, I wanted to add a pattern because just doing stockinette, I didn't think it would be very interesting. So I added um, the Emma's, Emma, it's called Emma Lace Socks in the Cuff Above. And I don't know how well you can see that in the video but I do like it it's a very simple pattern and I don't have to once I got the pattern down I don't have to look at the the pattern I can just knit away and go and what how I usually do with my socks is I knit both of them at the same time but I knit them on two separate needles magic loop so what I do is because I don't want to have second sock syndrome. I, I started my first pair of socks on double points and that lasted through that pair and the start of another pair. And when I was starting the second pair, I was just learning about the magic loop and the two circular needles and whatnot. And so I did try to knit the second pair on two circulars and I misunderstood the concept and I ordered 32 inch cables instead of 24 inch cables for two circulars and I found that it was just way too long, too much length in the cable. So then I learned the magic loop and it, it was perfect because I had two circular needles the same size because I had bought them to do it um, two circulars on, on, uh, at a time. 
think it was two at a time on two circulars and again it was it was too much so I just transferred one to one circular and one to the other circular and I've kind of been doing that ever since and I really do like it but what I do when I start my socks is I'll I'll knit the toe on one and I'll get to just where I'm gonna start the pattern and then I will knit the toe on the other and get to this part where I'm gonna start the pattern or if I'm gonna knit the foot I might knit up a little bit if I'm gonna knit a plain stockinette foot because sometimes I do that too and then I'll work up the foot I think I'm just about ready one of these socks yes this one here is ready for the heel and then this one I have a few more rows that I have to do before I get to the heel but and so I'll knit to that point and I'll wait and I'll do both of the heels at the same time um, I also have my own personal short row heel I I do prefer the short row heel and I've tried a number of different short row heels and I do like the lifestyle sock heel short row heel and I do use that um, quite a bit slightly modified and I also have my own version of a short row heel that I really like again the overachiever in me I like both of the sides of my socks to look the same so if my stitches on the right side of my sock are leaning one way I like them to lean the same way on the left side of the sock so they look the same even though nobody's gonna be looking at my feet you know at the heel of my sock but that's just the way I am so these socks are coming right along I haven't worked on them all that much um, I did work on them while I was at Knit Away for a while because they were an easy easy project but then sometimes doing the heel in a group when you're jumping up and down and, and going and doing different things is difficult so these kind of have been on the back burner for a little bit because I've been trying to finish up some other projects which I'm not going to really bring into this podcast because they were just on the verge of being finished but I did just finish a, um, a Knitting for Hire project that I've been working on um, that's another thing some of the projects that I work on I'm not going to be able to show on this podcast because I do a lot of commissioned work for designers and so I won't be able to show my progress on them because a lot of times there are unpublished patterns that they need samples for that they're going to be published so I won't be able to show those things but um, maybe once the the book or the pattern is published I can then show them as a finished object well I can't really show them as a finished object because I've already sent them but anyway um, maybe I should be able to show pictures after the fact. So those are my Emma Lace socks. And then I also have um, the fiber that I knit up from the Knit Girls. Again, I just started spinning at, in the middle of March. I started this fiber, spinning it on my drop spindle on April 2nd. I, I wasn't, like, I didn't um, know about the the spin along until probably about um, about the time that I decided to spin and the they had already done all the sales that was done way back in January or February and I didn't know about it then and I wasn't interested in about it in it then but I did post a request online if there was anybody that had bought fiber or bought extra fiber that they weren't going to use if they were willing to sell it and I did find a, a gal that was interested in selling her fiber so I was very excited about that and I ordered it and I got it on um, I think it was May 2nd or I mean sorry April 2nd that I received it and I immediately started spinning it but this is the fiber that I spun up um, it is I don't know again I don't know how well you can see it maybe I'll try and take a picture of it and um, and post that but it is a I would say it's a light fingering to lace maybe I'm not really sure how to measure it I do have the that whips per inch um, tool and I also have an app on my eye touch but I, again, I'm not really 100%. I know it's probably a light fingering. It's it's lighter than some of my sock sock yarn, but I two plied it, and um, I really like how it turned out. There is some thin spots, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm not knitting it into socks, so I'm not too concerned about having it uh, be too thin in certain spots. I am I'm knitting the um, Demeter shawl by Laura from the Knit Girls. And I started, I spun the fiber, 
I finished spinning the fiber on April 22nd and on April 23rd I cast on for this shawl. So there you can kind of see how my color repeats are coming up. I really like how that's working and um, I just I really like it and again here I've got my my stitch marker for my center of my my shawl so I remember that that's where I'm supposed to do my increases and whatnot and I this shawl is a very simple shawl it's just mostly stockinette with um, a border and so it'll be it'll be interesting to do that um, that knitted on border I've done stuff like that before but it's not my my typical thing that I do I well actually this is only the second shawl that I've actually um, done besides the Icarus. I did do another shawl that was more of a heavier weight and it was all stockinette but um, it wasn't really it was a wrap but anyway. So I'm really enjoying this project again I'm trying to get some of the old projects done before I get really into other things. I have a bad habit of you know starting a project being really excited about it and then starting another project and then getting off track. So I, again, I'm going to try and get get some of these older projects completed first. So you might see more progress on my older things and not so much on my newer projects, but we're going to get through it. And then as far as spinning right now, I am currently spinning some fiber from um, Lady Llama on Etsy, and I will post a link to her shop in the show notes. And this is the fiber. I believe it is, I think it's just a BFL top is what it is. And when I first, when I, when Kagi told me that she was going to do this demonstration at Knit Away, I had no clue what kind of fiber to get. You know, she was telling me top and roving and I hope that the cat's over there playing with a bag. But, um, so she was telling me top and roving and this and that and I was just like what what do I get so I kind of said tell me what to get so she sent me the links for a few Etsy shops and I was still totally confused I'm like just tell me pick something and send it to me and that's what I'll order and so this is what I ordered and I can probably oops oh, everything's falling out now this is this is what I spun on my drop spindle. This is I started on my drop spindle and then I transferred onto these little bobbins that my husband made me before knit away. Um, cuz I needed something to put my put my stuff on if I was going to continue spinning on my drop spindle. I could only spin so much on it. So I asked him to to come up with something for me to put my bobbins to put to wind my yarn on. And all I really wanted was you know, a couple of dowels in a shoebox, and he came back with this Lazy Kate, tensioned Lazy Kate with bobbins made and everything, and he's just a genius. So he's got me got me all all set up even before I went to camp. But anyway, this is this is the bobbin that he uh, made me, and this is what I spun on my my spindle. And then this is the second bobbin that I spun on my ladybug wheel, which I got at, while I was at Knit Away. Somebody picked it, I called the shop and paid for it, and somebody picked it up on their way to um, Knit Away. So this is, and this again, is coming out a very thin single, and I'm, what my plan is to three-ply it and hopefully make some socks out of it. I'm not going to Navajo ply it because, um... I've been told that Navajo plying, if you're going to do socks, is not really a great idea because if you get a hole, you're working with a single. So it's going to, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it, it, it sounds like, an, um, you know, the right, the right thing as far as using a Navajo ply on socks because it is a single and it's, I don't know if it's going to unravel easier or what, but it's not going to be as strong. So I am planning on three plying this just a regular three ply not not a Navajo ply I have tried some Navajo ply and I really think it's uh, an interesting technique 
and I'm sure that I will do some Navajo plying in the future if I'm going to be doing something such as a, a, a sweater or a shawl or wristlets or whatever. So I'm not going to put that back in there because it'll probably just fall out. So that, that is what I'm spinning. And there you'll see, you can see in the fiber maybe that there's some purple, some, some natural color, and some, some darker burgundy. So it'll be interesting to see what, how it turns out. So that is my spinning. I'm going to try, oh, I do have another thing of spinning, but mm, it's over across the room. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Um, I'll show that next time because I've really only gotten a tiny, tiny bit of it done. I got crazy after I learned how to to do the drop spindle. I think in the two weeks or three weeks before Knit Away, I think I bought eight drop spindles. Crazy. So, but I am going to try and keep my spinning limited. Um, at first, I'd like to be able to spin and then knit it right away. I know that a lot of people spin their fiber and then it sits in their stash for a while before they knit it up. Um... I'm going to try not to do that because as you can see behind me, I have quite a lot of stash and I don't really need more yarn in my stash. So I think to keep everything fresh and fun, I think I'm going to try and spin it and knit it right away. Who knows? That probably won't happen, but we'll see. So I think that is all of my... Um, my work's in progress right now. Like I said, I do have a couple other things. Oh, I do have a sock yarn blanket, but that's over there on the other side of the room too. So I'm not going to show that, but I am working on a sock yarn blanket. And if anybody is interested in donating their scraps, I think I can make two squares out of about five grams. So you don't need very many um, yards. I think that I think we measured that at camp and it it averages out to about seven to ten, I think it was seven to ten yards of, of sock yarn that you need for a square. Probably a little bit different for different weights. I don't know, baby, but, um, but yeah, so I am doing a sock yarn blanket. I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm doing something like 26 squares across. I wanted it wide enough to fit over my husband and I while we were sitting on the couch if we're you know, wanting to cuddle up and under something. So I will try and remember to show that next week. Um, and then, like I said, a couple of the projects that are like so close to being done that I'll just wait till they're done and then I'll show them as finished objects. Hopefully by next week, I will have two sweaters completed. Um, one, I just have to seam up and sew the arms in. And the other is like literally a half a cuff away from being done. But I think I'm going to... Uh, take out the other cuff because I made a mistake. Nobody's really going to notice, but again, here I am, the overachiever, so I'm going to take it out and redo the cuff because then I will know and then I'll be happy and it will be perfect. Um, one thing this week that was mentioned on Plurk and a couple of the, of the uh, podcasts is that the Respect the Spindle DVD, or not, I'm sorry, not DVD, but download, digital download from Interweave is on sale for 10 cents. And if you don't have this video, I actually have it already, and um, I've watched it, and it's really good. If you're thinking about drop spindling, even if you're not thinking about drop spindling right now, it's a good video for 10 cents. Buy it, and then you have it if at some point in the future you decide to, to start spinning. Last year at Knit Away, I was determined I was not going to be spinning. I That was not for me. I didn't want to do it. I wanted nothing to do with it. I said I would never spin. And then here I am this year going hog wild with it. So, again, I'm not going to be saying I will never do something again because <laughs> inadvertently I will eventually be doing it. So... Yeah, so the Drop Spindle class, or not the class, um, digital download, the Respect the Spindle is on sale for $0.10. Cents. And I did check earlier this morning, and it was still $0.10. Cents. So if you haven't gotten it, go get it. Because for $0.10, cents, keep it in your, your digital downloads. And, you know, if you ever decide you want to Drop Spindle, you have some, some tools right there to start learning right away. The other thing that I found this week that probably everybody in the world knows about it but me 
was the searches on Ravelry. Now, I know that the search has been around probably since the beginning, and probably what has happened is that I went and did some searches before and said, okay, yeah, whatever, it's fine, I'll use it later. Well, this week I discovered that you can actually enter the weight of your yarn and the yardage and search for projects that require that weight and that amount of yarn. That is awesome. I have so much yarn. I've got single balls and I've got extra things, extra hanks of yarn uh, that I want to use up. And this is like the perfect thing. I'm going to I'm going to probably spend a good majority of the afternoon just going through my single balls and trying to find small quick projects because I could probably knit up a whole bunch of stuff really quickly with a single ball. You know, I'm hoping that I can find some some cool projects that I can uh, knit up with some of those single balls that I have. So yeah, go to Ravelry and go to their search function. I think you have to go to Advanced Search. And then down the left-hand side of the of the page, there's all sorts of different things that you can choose. And another cool thing was that you could select to show patterns that are in your favorites or in your queue or um, from your favorite designers and whatnot. And I, since I've been a member of Ravelry, I've constantly been adding things to my favorites even if I don't have any intention of knitting them at any point but just something that if I like it I put it in my favorites and then if I ever am at a loss for what to work on I can always go to favorites and see about uh, download doing a pattern from there so that is my tip of the week I guess you could say is that search on Ravelry and again everybody probably already knows it but not me. I don't know why, but I I just didn't know about it, but I do now, and I'm happy that I know about it, and I'm very excited about it. So I think that's all. Oh, I did want to mention I'm going to do some podcast shout-outs. Um, I've mentioned Kagi from the High Fiber Diet a number of times. She is fabulous. She is so knowledgeable about so many things, knitting, crochet, and spinning, that she just by teaching you she enables you to want to do these these projects and crafts and if you haven't already checked out her podcast it's an audio podcast but if you haven't checked out her podcast go and check it out because like i said she is so knowledgeable and just she i think she knows just about everything and if she doesn't know it she probably goes and finds out what the answer is but Yes, yeah, she's really great, and I've learned so much from her. And listening to her podcast and learning about the spinning fiber, she's currently doing, I guess it's like a fiber sampler where she gets a bunch of different wools and she starts from directly off the sheep. I'm not really sure. I think she has to card them. She has to wash. I think she washed them, and then she has to card them. Um, so, yeah, check it out and, and see see if you like it. I like her show is great. Like I said, it's very informative. And the second podcast that I like to mention is um, Tammy from the proverbial knitter. Uh, she's been very helpful with helping me get started. I just asked her a couple questions. She she answered my questions very quickly. You know, what kind of camera do I get? You know, like I said, I'm an overachiever. I want everything to be perfect the first time. I don't want to go through the hassles of some of the other podcasters where they've tried to do it one way and then had to get a different camera. So I'm hoping that I can get this started right from the beginning and with the right equipment and everything and hopefully it'll go just exactly as planned. Probably not, but we'll see how that goes. And I probably should have set my timer because I have no idea how long I've been gabbing. I didn't think I would be able to to talk. I thought, oh yeah, my podcast is going to be 12 minutes and, you know, who knows, it probably is 12 minutes by now, but, um, anyway, so, so yeah, Tammy from the Proverbial Knitter, she does have some, um, some scripture in her podcast, but, and at first I was, I was, I'm not, I'm not really a, a religious person. I, I do um, believe in God and whatnot, and, but, um, I don't, do a lot of religion stuff so I was kind of questionable about whether I wanted to watch her podcast but I did watch it and it's very minimal at the end and I like it because she she relates the scripture to knitting 
and it's just I I really like it. I really she has lots of um, lots of projects going. Some of the th I don't know. I didn't watch her mo her most recent ones. I kind of like to watch the podcast from the beginning. So she started her her video podcast started at episode nine. So that's where I started. And I think I've only watched like nine, ten, and eleven, maybe twelve. And so I don't really know what she's currently working on, but. Um, but she's really good, and like I said, she was very helpful with me with getting my podcast going. So thank you, Tammy, for that. And uh, yeah, go and check her out. She's also on iTunes, and um, Kagi from the High Fiber Diet is also on iTunes. So you can check out both of those podcasts. And each week, I will try and mention um, a podcast that I'm watching. I do watch a lot of them, and. Um, like I said, hopefully somebody will find this interesting and want to watch, and I'll keep going, and we'll keep having fun together. And I will also be starting, I know that a, a couple of the other podcasters do virtual knit night and whatnot, and I did set up a room for that a couple of times, and um, just with my, my local knitting club. But I do plan on having that probably on a regular basis. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to have it on a regular basis, but... Um, once I decide what's a good day and night or whatever um, to have that, I will get that set up. And if we have an, enough people that are interested, maybe I'll set up a group on Ravelry at right now. I mean, who knows? There might be one person watching it, which is me and probably my husband because he wants to laugh at me after I record. But anyway... If we have enough interest, we'll set up a group on Ravelry for discussions. I know some of the other podcasts do knit along, so maybe we'll try that if there's some interest in that. But right now, I'm just going to share my my projects and my finds of the week. And hopefully you guys will find this interesting enough to keep coming back and watching more. Alright, so that's all for this week. And hopefully I will see you again next week. Bye for now.